Well, hey there. Welcome to the bar. What can I get for you? Sorry, they told you to ask me about what now? The Bethelites. <laughs> and who told you to ask me about that, huh? No, I just want to know who the troublemakers are here. Oh, it's all right. I suppose it's kind of a funny story anyway. The Bethelites are a religious group run by the Reverend Willem Kyle down in Aurora. I originally met him back in St. Louis when my daddy had a little shop getting goods off the riverboat and selling them to people heading west on the Oregon Trail. It's not bad business. Heaven knows there's been no shortage of people who've wanted to try their luck out in the Wild West. You're familiar with that idea, aren't you now? <laughs> well, my daddy had this clerk, you see. He and I were so smitten for each other. But my daddy never would have agreed to it. He seems to have forgotten that he started off as a clerk himself once. If we hadn't moved west to Missouri, he never would have made his fortune. <laughs> but daddy still wanted me to marry somebody with more money. Said he didn't leave his whole family behind so that his baby girl could have the same fate that he did. I don't know, I didn't think it was such a bad fate. Anyway, me and my beloved are working the store one day, and in walks this bushy bearded old German man with his young son, Wilhelm Kyle. He says that he's a preacher, right? And he has had this vision. God has told him to go to the promised land. And that with his young son, Willie, leading the way, they will have safe passage. Willie's this scrawny teenager, don't look like much to me, but apparently he'd been practicing with the oxen. He could drive a team pretty well. <laughs> Reverend Kyle said that he and his congregation, they had a talent for building furniture, fine furniture. And that they were going to go out west and make their fortune in the promised land selling to all those other people who were moving west. Truth be told, sounded a little bit like my daddy talking about how he was going to move west to St. Louis, sell goods to the people traveling out to the Oregon Trail. Before they left our shop, Reverend Kyle and Willie invited us to come join their congregation and see what was up. My beloved and I talked it over and realized that this could be the beginning of a new life for us. We could join up with Reverend Kyle, he could marry us, and we could travel west on the Oregon Trail, find a place to settle down, <laughs> sell goods to travelers who are on their way to make their fortune. We talked to my daddy about it, and he wasn't such a hypocrite that he didn't see the opportunities, and he gave us his blessing. He might not have wanted me to marry a clerk, but now is going to marry a man with a future. So Cupcake and I... Oh, <laughs> that was my little nickname for him, Cupcake. Cupcake and I grabbed our belongings, a little bit of money, and we headed up to Bethel to meet with the congregation before they left. Funny thing about Willie leading the Oregon Trail, when we got there, he was looking mighty peaked. Poor boy had come down with malaria. Still... Reverend Kyle kept saying he had had a vision. Willie was going to get better because he had seen it. He had seen Willie Kyle leading us west to the promised land. And with him leading the way, we would have safe passage. So you can imagine how awkward it became for us a week later when malaria took poor Willie. But... Reverend Kyle had had a vision, let's not forget. Willie was going to lead the way. So, in order to honor the prophecy, these fine furniture makers made a very fine casket for Willie. Absolutely airtight, they lined it with lead. And then they filled it with alcohol. Absolute barrels full of 100 proof whiskey. I do admit I was a little surprised to see how much 100 proof whiskey a small congregation had at hand. 
But they had it. And they filled that casket. And they floated Willie in that casket. <laughs> Closed the lid and hoisted Willie up onto the cart that was going to lead the way to the promised land. <sighs> hmm? Oh. <laughs> yeah. He was indeed a pickled pioneer. <laughs> oh. Well, we headed out west. And, I have to admit, things went very smoothly. Follow the golden rule and all will be well, he would say. The congregation was very kind. They believed in shared property, so everything they had belonged to everyone who was there. I'm not proud to say that I was reticent to contribute the money that I'd saved. But Cupcake rightly pointed out that we didn't exactly have enough money to get out west on our own, so it's not like we were really losing anything. We put our lot in with theirs, so to speak. We agreed to follow the golden rule. We plan to travel in the spring and the summer, as you do, giving ourselves lots of time to get there before winter. But by the time we got to Fort Kearney, people had warned us against going further. We'd headed out right in the middle of the First Sioux War. <laughs> the timing. The soldiers had come after the Sioux over a cow, of all things. Dozens of soldiers were killed, and one Sioux chief. There was not going to be an end to that fighting anytime soon, and that's what we were walking right into. Personally, I was ready to cut our losses and just settle down in Nebraska, but Reverend Kyle had had his vision. He had seen the glory of the promised land with Willie leading the way, and he was not to be deterred. We were going to have safe passage. <sighs> By the time we got to Fort Laramie, those soldiers thought we were nuts. Can't say I didn't agree with them. Fort Laramie was the post that had lost dozens of soldiers. They understood firsthand the fierceness of the Sioux warriors. But Reverend Cal had had his vision. And at this point, my cupcake was beginning to, uh, believe it. We pushed on past Fort Laramie. And in a few days, sure enough, we went to sleep at night and woke up in the morning surrounded by a war party. Arrows drawn, pointed at all of us. We were surrounded. Reverend Kyle had stepped forward to represent our party, trying to speak peace to them in a language they clearly did not understand. And he also clearly did not understand what they were saying. But they'd seen that big box on the cart in front leading the way. I can only assume they imagined it was supplies or guns. They gestured for Reverend Kyle to open it up. A couple of the men pried the lid off of the casket, and all of a sudden the entire congregation, me and Cupcake excluded of course, the entire congregation breaks out into this German psalm in four-part harmony. It, it was lovely. It was spectacular. And it was a sight to behold for me and Cupcake and the entire war party. We all watched with our jaws hanging just a little bit low. When I say I don't know what those warriors were expecting to see when they opened that box, I'm telling the truth. But what I do know is that they didn't expect to see that. None of us could have expected to see that. In twos and threes and threes and fours, the warriors came up to take a closer look to see Willie sloshing around in that casket. To hear Reverend Kyle speak of it later, he would tell you that it was his internal goodness, his natural politeness, and the Spirit of God that shined through him that let those warriors know we were peaceful people and no threat to them. And that's why they let us through safely. He said that we had all been safe because we followed the golden rule. But I tell you what, I was there. 
Those warriors didn't give a groundhog's danglies about the reverend's glowing goodness. <laughs> they were just spectacularly amused by this crazy train of people who were carrying this pickled pioneer <laughs> across the Oregon Trail. Suffice it to say, they did not kill us as they had done or threatened to do to so many others. They didn't destroy our wagons, they didn't turn us around and send us on our way. <laughs> Instead what they did was they guided us to come back to their village so that we could meet their friends and family and everyone from the women to the children could come take a look at Floatin' Willie Kyle. <laughs> they fed us well. They were kind, they were friendly, they gave us a scout. When it was time for us to leave the next day, they sent us along with someone who would guide us to the next tribe. While other wagon trains were being forced to take a more treacherous southern route that was longer and harder in order to avoid the fierce Sioux tribes. And don't mistake me, they were very capable fighters. But we were being given safe passage and treated like visiting royalty, brought from tribe to tribe and camp to camp. They were kind in their gestures, generous with their supplies, and they even showed us what fruits and vegetables were safe to eat and how to prepare them. We had, I have to say, a very blessed trip with Willie Kyle leading the way. <laughs> we made it all the way to the west coast before the real harshness of winter set in. We settled in the area known as Menlo, Washington. And despite how relatively quickly we made it across half the continent, it was not a moment too soon. Willie's casket was almost out of alcohol. Hmm? Oh. Uh. Yeah, sure. It could have evaporated. Let's just go with that. Huh. Anyway. Some fine November evening, we lit our lamps, went up on the hill, and laid poor Willie to rest high up in a place where he could see the promised land his father had claimed was there. We built little homes, the furniture makers made their fine furniture, and uh, the whiskey makers sold their whiskey. But um, Reverend Kyle's prophecy only went so far. There was one fatal flaw with his plan. Well, there was no one else out there. We'd set up north of where there was any sort of camp or civilization or fort. There was no one to buy the furniture, no one to buy the whiskey. <laughs> so, a year later, the congregation picked up and moved down across the river to Oregon. They did better for themselves down there in Aurora. They're still down there as a congregation and a community. They share their properties, they share their profits living together in a sort of communal living type of thing. It wasn't really for me. They're good people, don't get me wrong. But I'm too much of my father's daughter. I had to see if I could find my own personal fortune. Which brings me to my original question. Can I get you something to drink? I have some very fine 100 proof whiskey. <laughs> Why, yes, it is indeed from the congregation. <laughs> it's called Golden Rule Whiskey. Oh, yeah. That part. Uh, when they said follow the Golden Rule, <laughs> they were talking about the whiskey. <laughs> Here you go. Drink up. And here's a toast to the pickled pioneer. Hey there, folks. I hope you enjoyed that story. 
It's been one of my favorites for a long time because, as you may have guessed, the pickled pioneer is, in fact, or rather was, in fact, a real person who was carried across the Oregon Trail in, I believe, 1855. And the stories I told were actually true. Um, but I was not, in fact, there. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I was so tickled to bring you this story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I love it. Talk to you later. <laughs>